so my name is Paul Connell, I'm founder of Open Innovations. I've got a thing that makes the slides go backs and forwards, apparently. There we go, that's me. Um, I'm going to talk to you about us, Open Innovations, our work and our mission. I'm going to give you some examples of what we've done. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about what we've learnt, and I might challenge you, hopefully. And then hopefully you're going to ask some hard questions. Uh, this is us. Um, everything we do is on the web. Um, and you can see what we are. We are a not-for-profit, independent, mission-led, radically open, open organisation. Um, it's completely self-funding, which gives us a load of um, uh, freedom to operate. And we use open data to innovate and help people make better decisions with a mission. That's where we are. If you know Leeds, we're on the top floor of Munro House. And we do innovation. So um, if you have access to the slides, I've sent them through. These are all links to our Open Data Saves Lives work, our Open Transport Wealth work, our work on diversity data, our work on levelling up for the UK, and our work with the Northern Lands. So if you are from the Netherlands, we've been uh, partnering with the Kingdom of Netherlands to connect across the North Sea, and we've come up with hashtag Northern Lands. So we've done four Northern Lands conferences where we have been connecting people doing stuff with data and sharing it openly and radically openly at that. Two live examples of work we're doing right now are the Leeds 2023 Year of Culture and our work with the Youth Futures Foundation, which is all about creating equity of employment um, opportunity for everybody. And those two are great examples. Um, I don't know, if, can we access the links on those? No. Right, okay. Uh, I'm gonna tweet these out in a minute and you can access the links yourselves. But the, these are basically microsites where we are, help, we are publishing data, we're publishing story blogs, we're publishing technical blogs about the operation of these um, programs, but you could imagine they might be a research paper, or you could imagine they might be a research program, and you could imagine they might be a website for each of them. But so what? So we've done loads of cool stuff. This is one of the messages I want to take away, is use the web as it was intended, and be radically open. We have... We, in our work, we've completed zero white papers, we've done no think pieces, we haven't just talked about stuff, we do hardly any round tables where people chat. We write blogs about important stuff, we have repos where our data and code is, and we build tools that are important and useful. And we just talked to the, the session over there about uh, reward um, and recognition for work is, is really interesting for me because um, if things exist, they are real, people can find them on the web, they are so much more valuable than a really, really powerful um, piece of work that's hidden in a book that no one's read. If it exists on the web, it exists. If it's not, it may as well not exist. And you may have a better argument, but if you can't find it, and it's not easy to find, who has the better, uh, who has more impact, I guess. So why do we do this? Why are we radically open? It's good for business. Open doesn't mean free. You have to really understand that. It doesn't mean free, but it should mean faster and it should mean better and it should mean cheaper. Not just for the people who are engaging with you or using your stuff or uh, accessing your data or your thinking or whatever you've done, but yourself as well. It, it, makes, it probably gives you more time and space to do what you need to do because you're creating reproducible patterns, you're creating easier ways of doing things, you do it once, you can do it a hundred times. It means people can find us. So we have five permanent staff and five associates, but I am always amazed by the reach of our brand, the reach of our work, the fact that we're recognised and repeated back to us uh, by government in the UK, by governments across uh, Europe and, and even further afield now. But that's just a small team of five permanent five associates. But because we're on the web and people can find us and we're doing interesting work and we ask for feedback really early on in our work. So it's not just at the end of the process where you publish it openly. It's right at the start. So announcing that I am starting this work, it is really interesting. Would you like to find us? Um, 
and may be getting it slightly wrong to start off with so you can get it right in the future. It's a massive benefit to how we run our organisation. And this is one of the other parts that I want people to take away. The benefits of being open are not to people external to your organisation first. First and foremost, they're to your organisation and how you work and bringing equity of access of power in the organisation itself. So being open takes away power from the usual um, leaders or um, uh, people in control of situations it really provides equity of access to the what's going on in the organisation, what have you found out, who is interested in your work across all parts of the organisation. And this is not just the researchers, from what I can tell, but it's also for everyone who's engaging with you, so the people who are going to um, help you do your work, um, organise your work internally. If they've already seen you publish what you're doing, they can normally second-guess what you're going to need to help and they might say, oh, well, this is what we did last time. This is what we're going to do now. So you're 80% along the way. So be radically open and this is the other one. Kill all reports. Build websites. Don't write reports. If you're radically open, you can create the massive surpluses around your work, which might be economic, they might be social, they might be civic benefit. But if it's not available and people can't find it, you are not going to ex access all of those spin-off or adjacent benefits from your work. You might guess about it, and you might say in your evaluation that people could, if they wanted, would do blah, 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 but it is just talk, unless people can find it. And then the last bit, if you are radically open, you will find friends and people or organisation you've not met yet. So they will read your stuff, and then maybe six months later, when they, they're starting to work on stuff, they'll use a search engine um, to find other people who are doing stuff, and they'll find you. They might find you on social media when you're talking about it. They might think, I'm, I'm going to work on that in six months, 12 months. When they're ready, they'll contact you. So they'll reach into your project without you ever meeting them. And if it's good, they'll, they'll get involved. So three questions I want to ask you, yourselves, and maybe ask other people when you get back. Where, what, organi what data does your organisation release? Where can you find it? And also, why aren't you releasing more data? Because if you do that, well, you can answer me, it's going to help you work together. It will, it will definitely help you do better research and also forget about IP. It's just chat. It really is, because unless you're going to be willing to invest the same, maybe double, maybe triple the amount in the research in a business development programme, in a um, sales force, in a testing and prototyping uh, thing or process for your work, you might as well not bother. You, uh, you're going to get more value by giving that away or making it able for people to use that. So when they do, they're going to come to you to implement whatever you've built, and that's your commercial opportunity. Wrapping it up in some mad IP wrapper is like putting it in a, um, a, a set of drawers and hiding it at the back of the library and expecting someone to come along and say, oh, I'm going to pay you two million quid for that. Okay, so thanks very much.